Chapter 41 The Ascension of Christ All heaven was waiting the hour of triumph when Jesus should ascend to his Father. Angels came to receive the King of glory and to escort him triumphantly to heaven. After Jesus had blessed his disciples, he was parted from them and taken up. And as he led the way upward, the multitude of captives who were raised at his resurrection followed. A multitude of the heavenly host were in attendance, while in heaven an innumerable company of angels awaited his coming. As they ascended to the holy city, the angels who escorted Jesus cried out, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. The angels in the city cried out with rapture, Who is this King of glory? The escorting angels answered in triumph, The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Again the waiting angels asked, Who is this King of glory? And the escorting angels answered in melodious strains, The Lord of hosts, He is the King of glory. And the heavenly train passed into the city of God. Then all the heavenly hosts surrounded their majestic commander and with the deepest adoration bowed before him and cast their glittering crowns at his feet. And then they touched their golden harps and in sweet, melodious strains filled all heaven with rich music and songs to the Lamb who was slain, yet lives again in majesty and glory. As the disciples gazed sorrowfully toward heaven to catch the last glimpse of their ascending Lord, two angels clothed in white apparel stood by them and said to them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. The disciples and the mother of Jesus, who with them had witnessed the ascension of the Son of God, spent the following night in talking over his wonderful acts and the strange and glorious events which had taken place within a short time. Satan again counseled with his angels, and with bitter hatred against God's government told them that while he retained his power and authority upon earth, their efforts must be tenfold stronger against the followers of Jesus. They had prevailed nothing against Christ, but must overthrow his followers, if possible. In every generation they must seek to ensnare those who should believe in Jesus. He related to his angels that Jesus had given his disciples power to rebuke them and cast them out and to heal those whom they should afflict. Then Satan's angels went forth like roaring lions, seeking to destroy the followers of Jesus.